business. We're going to stick with retail. Talk about another retail winner. By the way, Gap shares up more than 8% after hours. Check out Williams Sonoma, which closed up more than 9%. It was even higher than that earlier in the session. Parent of brands like Pottery Barn, West Elm, Rejuvenation, Williams Sonoma, of course, saw its stock soar, hitting an intraday all-time high. The company posting better than expected results on the top and bottom lines, raising its 2021 revenue forecast, expecting now high teens to low 20s percentage growth and raising its dividend by 20 percent. Joining us now for an exclusive interview is Laura Albert, William Sonoma CEO. Laura, thank you for joining us. What do you think the street got wrong? Clearly, you delivered very strong results and, and painted a picture of, of strength to come. Why do you think it came as such a surprise? You know, um, I, it's, it's always hard to guess, right? But um, we've been seeing strength even before the pandemic. And what was sad is we worried the pandemic would would be a negative. We all didn't know what to happen. What would what would happen? And then, due to our growth strategies and our differentiators and our amazing people, we outperformed, and we have a clear roadmap and optimism ahead for the future, which is why we raised guidance and delivered such a strong quarter. When people were at home during COVID, they were focused on their homes, obviously, because they were spending their time there. They were eating at home. They were working from home. They were playing at home. Every everything. Now that we're out. Again, are people still refurbishing and refurnishing their homes in a way that we saw during the pandemic? Because your, your results point to the fact that they, they seem to be. And, and I find that a little curious, given we're all going out again. I mean, home has always been your greatest asset, right? And people this year learned that it's both your sanctuary, it's where you work, it's where you celebrate in some fashion. And, um, you know, improving your home has been a good investment this year. We see home sales going up. We see people moving a lot. Uh, and regardless of suburban or urban, movement is good for us. Now, in terms of lifestyle trends, people, you know, have a new appreciation for the outdoors, which I don't think we see stopping anytime soon. And as I said, hybrid work is gaining traction. The numbers on that show that it's going to continue into the future. And so many people, the sentiment, I don't know about you, but everyone wants a new home. They're talking about remodels. And the market is so fractured. No one owns even more than one one percent and nobody owns much share and so as we think about the future both the macro allows our industry to grow but also within that there's so much share to pick up within our industry can, can that continue even if we do start to see housing sales roll over just because there's been lack of inventory and prices have gotten so hot that we have started to see sales come off a bit i believe that i believe that customers will always look for the best product and our strategy and our differentiators really set us apart. We are designing the whole home. We're not just doing one category. And we love what we do. We have a vertical structure. We have so many people that are talented working on these designs. And that really does set us apart from other people. We, we combine that with our design services, which we provide both in-store and online. And it's a very, very compelling platform. We see more and more customers coming to us. And as I said, the opportunity to take more share is there, whether or not the industry grows. But by the way, I believe strongly and very optimistic that the industry will continue to grow. What about rising raw material costs and freight costs? How has that impacted you guys? And, and do you think that continues to be a headwind for the industry? Well, no one is immune from those things. But I think those who understand where the customer wants value and then also how to build quality into a product are the ones who are going to be the winners. At the same time, you have to have offsets. You have to know exactly where you can offset some of those increases so you can continue to deliver for your shareholders while giving your customers better value. I was just going to ask, are, are we paying more for products at a know, West Elm, for instance? Are, are consumers paying more? I know you're seeing a lot fewer promotions across the retail industry, but what are we seeing on prices? Some products are more expensive. We've added quality. We've added, you know, Green Guard certified wood to some, you know, to some products, particularly in our kids and teen brands. But at the same time, customers are also looking for value. So we are also offering more opening price points. West Elm, for example, has more opening price points than Potter Barn, but Potter Barn too has added their apartment strategy. And the apartment strategy attracts younger customers and people who aren't looking for such large-scale furniture, and that's been a big growth driver for them. So at the same time, 
that some products are going up in prices or we're adding more quality to them. We're also offering our customers more value in some of these other categories. Beyond the home, Laura, you, you guys also seem to benefit from a number of other trends that are happening right now. Back to school, which is truly back to school this year. Back to weddings and, and the registries that go along with that and baby showers and all of that sort of thing, which I know you got asked about on the call. How sustainable is that rise in business you're seeing beyond this, this initial pop in reopening momentum? And what's fascinating is as well as we're doing and as good as the retail comps are, the truth is the traffic in our retail stores is still down to 2019. So imagine when that comes back to, so people are out, but they're not out as much as they were before. And there's still upside in these businesses. And some of them are really nascent. So we have strategies in place to say, this business is only this big. Here's how big the market is. What are we going to need to do to improve our offer and reach more customers? You know, I talked about West Elm yesterday. The market awareness of West Elm is so low. And if we just bring it up to what's a normal brand's level, that's a three times on the West Elm brand alone. So there is plenty of room for growth in this model. So how do you do that? You're you increasing marketing spending? Well, we are increasing we are increasing marketing spending and we're seeing great ROI, Sarah. So we have been very careful about measuring and adding spend to where the customer responds. But we are also aggressive and we're using this important tool in this history of ours with data to, to put the money where it matters and to get the ROI back. So while the margins went up 360 basis points in total, you saw that we also increased our advertising spend, which is deliberate and is competitive and is an opportunity for us both with new customers and existing customers to get more share.